now let's go through the steps to map a process. First, complete the SIPOP to identify the boundaries of your process. Secondly, identify all the steps in the process. Thirdly, show the outputs at each step. And finally, list and classify the input variables. Now let's discuss each one in a bit more detail using the example of making coffee. Step 1. Identify the boundaries of your process, which can be found in your SIPOC. Using our example of making coffee, the process will start with having the bag of coffee beans in hand, and will finish with the coffee brewed and ready to pour. Step 2. Identify all the steps between the boundaries. The level of detail should be such that the process is described in 3 to 10 steps. Steps should include all inspection points, rework, etc. Any time that can influence the outputs of the process. You can also find these on your SIPOC. This is a critical point in your process map because we don't want to stay at a high level. At this point, we want to start asking ourselves what else is going on in this process. We should be looking for duplication or redundancy in work, decision points, delays, rework loops, and non-value added steps. So using our example, the steps include grinding the coffee beans, placing the ground coffee, filter, and water in the coffee maker, and then brewing the coffee. Step 3. Show the outputs at each step. Here, you'll want to identify the desired outputs for each step in the process. Some of these outputs will become outputs of the entire process, while some become inputs to following process steps. Just like with your SIPOC, you now want to identify the outputs to each step. Remember that this is much more detailed than your SIPOC, and you'll need to think about every desired output each step should produce. The question then becomes, are we actually getting these desired outputs? Going back to our example, the step of grinding coffee beans results in beans being ground to the proper size and the time taken to actually grind the beans. The step of placing the ground coffee, filter, and water into the coffee maker results in the coffee and filter being properly placed into the coffee maker, the time taken putting these items into the coffee maker and filling it with the proper amount of water and the step of brewing coffee results in a good tasting hot coffee and the time consumed brewing the coffee. Step 4. List the input variables. Again, just like with your SIPOC, you now want to identify the inputs to each step. Just like the outputs, this step is much more detailed than your SIPOC and you'll need to think about all the inputs that go into each step. The question then becomes, are we actually getting the correct inputs into the process and at the right time? When listing these inputs, it can be helpful to think in terms of three different categories. Administrative, manufacturing, and service. In the administrative category, you have price, processes, promotion, policies, place, procedures, product or services, and people. In manufacturing, there's man, method, material, machine, measure, and mother nature, or the environment. And in services, you have surroundings, suppliers, systems, and skills.